Hey everyone, Justin here from Soda Mill Sim. Just doing a follow up video to our original uh, packing video where we showed you how we pack for a 48 to 72 hour uh, Mill Sim event. A lot of things have changed since we shot that. We've condensed and consolidated and, and pruned gear to get things more dialed in. And we kind of wanted to shoot a follow up to show you what all has changed. Uh, the biggest change for me has been moving to a battle belt system. Previously, I kept everything on my plate carrier, which I found to be very heavy and fatiguing on my shoulders. Uh, especially after a long day of, of rocking about. Uh, so I, I've, I've set up a first line here using a tactical tailor uh, flight light battle belt with an accoutrement of pouches, uh, pouches on it. Uh, first thing I have is a multi-tool pouch with Leatherman Charge Titanium. I keep a tourniquet pouch, very clearly labeled my Milson West tourniquet. I actually happen to have a real wood cat in here right now, but that's where my Milson West tourniquet would be. Uh, this is a full Real old IFAC, it has a uh, quick clot, epinephrine injector, etc. It also has some admin tools in it, um, like a right in the rain pad, pen, small flashlight, um, basic boo boo kit stuff, uh, as well as in the larger pouch here um, an ace bandage, a CPR mask, bug spray, sunscreen, etc. Just small things you need to have uh, while out and about. Uh, especially if you're going to be away from your PB for a while. Radio pouch, sometimes I actually just put a water bottle in here if I don't want to carry my full hydration system. Uh, spare LM4 mag, either for myself or for someone else. And then two mags for my uh, KB8 P9. Moving on to my second line, I have significantly stripped down my plate carrier uh, from the last event. I still run my Banshee, uh, but I've, I've just moved it down to the bare necessities. I have my combo on here and my mags, that's it. Everything else runs on the battle belt. Up front, I have a triple pouch. It's a 10 speed that holds my four M4 magazines. I have a taco pouch on, to, on the left here that has a uh, Yaesu FT60R 5 watt radio, and I'm using an antenna relocation kit. You can see the antenna has moved to the back and it's high up. Uh, the advantage of this is it gets the radio signal above your body um, and away from you. Your body acts as a big shield for the radio waves and can impact your transmission and your ability to receive, especially with just a, a basic 5 watt consumer radio. So getting that antenna up high is important. If you don't have an antenna relocation kit, even just holding the walkie talkie in front of your face and out uh, will do wonders to boost your range. That integrates into uh, a push to talk system here that then talks to my MSA uh, headset. On the side, I have a small Tack Taylor dump pouch. Very lightweight, holds a couple of magazines or some small intel that I might gather off of someone, BBs or, or papers or whatever. Moving on to my ruck and my assault pack, as you can see here, I have a Tack Taylor Rock, the removal operator pack, which is clipped to my Everly Stock Terminator F4 uh, ruck. The advantage here is I can just ruck out with everything here, and then when I get to camp, I can break this off very easily and transition it onto my plate carrier. We'll go ahead and start with the assault pack. So it's just four simple clips, and it breaks away from the back. Now, previously, I used the quick detach system um, on my plate carrier as well, so the small backpack clipped onto the back of my plate. What I found there was that frequently I was having to open the pack up, and I couldn't do that without taking the plate carrier off or asking someone else for assistance. So instead, I just moved back to the straps, and I just wear it over my plate. That way, I can take the backpack off at will. In the back, I have a Camelback Armorback 106 ounce bladder. Continuing to work into the pack, I carry a small uh, REI windstill jacket. This has an integrated hood for a light rain. Uh, it's very, very thin, provides very little insulation, uh, but it's great for, for a breeze or for a light rain. And here's also where I keep my KWA MP9. This is my secondary weapon. Um, I found it more versatile than a pistol. Sometimes the LM4s can act up, and it's, it, it, this is nice to be able to have a weapon that uh, has some, some proper range to it. I carry one can of green gas into the field with me, a spare magazine in addition to the two that are on my battle belt. 
This is a small toolkit. Inside of it, I carry vice grips, a toothbrush, which is good for cleaning debris. If a BB gets jammed or shattered in the barrel, screwdriver, Allen keys, very important. Small roll of duct tape, some zip ties, the all important USB tool, which is great for popping the last BB out of a magazine when you're loading them, some cleaning cloths. Dell picks, microfiber, and some uh, Q-tips for cleaning. In this foam pouch here, I keep my Adams Industries uh, Pitbull Gen 3 nods, rail mount for mounting it on either my primary or my secondary weapon, in addition to a GMP infrared uh, D-ball for laser designation and illumination. Moving on to the main ruck, we'll start from the outside and work our way in. In this outside pontoon here, I keep a Condor Summit. Condor has come a real long way uh, since I first started wearing Condor gear about seven or eight years ago. Uh, this is a remarkably high quality jacket for about the $85 and $90 price point. Pockets everywhere. Um, inside the main pocket here, I keep a spare small flashlight as well as a small knife. Has an integrated hood. Um, this is this is good in a light rain. Uh, it will not provide full waterproof protection in a heavy rain. That's what you use a poncho or a tarp for. In this pouch here, I carry just the floor cover of my MSR Nook tent. It's an earth color. It's about a five by seven. It's a very lightweight tarp. We stopped carrying tents pretty much entirely because they're such a pain in the ass to set up and tear down. Um, and when you are setting up a patrol base, you really want to be able to expediently set up and tear down your gear. Uh, so this is a great option for providing some rain protection without having to set up a full tent. I'm a big fan of having at least one hot meal a day. It's very hard sometimes to find the time at an MSW game, and, and we have an emphasis this time going to our first four-day long event to make sure that we're having ample time for rest and recovery, uh, and I think a hot meal is a part of that. So in here I keep three different meals. I have a Jamaican-style uh, jerk rice with chicken, pad thai, which is probably one of my favorite backpacking meals, as well as um, a pesto salmon and pasta. They're all Backpackers Pantry, everyone kind of has their own brand they like. This brand's been pretty consistent for me. Mountain House is also pretty good. Um, some guys like to carry MREs. I've found with MREs, they're pre-hydrated, so you're carrying the weight of the water with you, and you're pretty much always going to have water at your camp, so this is a way to save a little bit of weight and still get the nutrients you need to continue on. So opening up the main part of the pouch here, first thing I have is my Nomad 7 solar panel. It's a 7 watt panel. It can be linked with one other panel to create a 14 watt array, uh, which is sufficient to charge phones, GPSs, um, radios, etc. Inside, I have an accoutrement of cables, batteries, uh, spare 6 AA battery pack for my Yaesu, as well as a 20,000 milliamp backup battery, which is pretty significant. And this will charge my uh, Galaxy Note 5 four times. I use my Note 5 in place of my uh, GPS most of the time just because the maps are a lot higher resolution. I have a snack pack. In here I have Tiger's Milk Bars, Cliff Bars, Lara Bars, Fruit Roll-Ups, uh, Titanium Spoon and Fork Set, Salt and Pepper, and then a small bag of various spices, hot sauces, and teas. Previously I carried an uh, MSR Reactor, which is a 1.8 liter uh, stove system. It's very heavy, but it had the advantage of being able to boil water rapidly, and I could boil water for a lot of people. Um, but since then, I've cut some weight and dropped down to the GSI Outdoor Titanium Pot. Inside, I have a spare fuel canister and a lighter. Unfortunately, the MSR um, Pocket Rocket Stove won't fit inside. It's close to it, but not quite. My sleeping pad and my sleeping bag are rolled up in here together. I can unfurl it, and my sleeping pad and my sleeping bag are all in one piece together. I don't have to worry about separating two different stuff sacks. Two inner zipper pockets here. I carry 50 feet of paracord and glaze orange. This is useful for guying out tarps uh, around your patrol base. I like this color because it allows you to see it at night. It's not easy to trip over as a black or a green might be. Obviously, it's not very discreet. I also carry fishing line in my toolkit. 
um, for setting up trip wires and things like that. A barrel wrench, sometimes you have to you know, serve as an AR uh, at the patrol base. This is useful to have. I have a small kit of tools here, including your basic fire starting gear, fishing line, a lighter, a spare 18650 for my pocket flashlight, some duct tape, various tent stakes, and a lightweight Sawyer Mini water filter. Uh, I haven't yet needed a water filter at a game, but it's one of those things that it's only a couple of ounces and it's nice to have. This is my toiletries in here. I carry wet wipes because using the Portage on single ply paper can really be hard on your ass after a few days. This is you know, nice, keeps you clean, also good for whore baths out in the field. Sunscreen, very important, especially when you're doing these summer, summer games in like, Eastern Washington. Um, toothbrush, gold bond, deodorant, bug spray, etc. Some more miscellaneous snacks. Noon tablets, it's important to uh, you know, replenish your electrolytes, so you toss one of these in your bladder. They are bladder safe. And the only thing I keep in here is I carry a cold steel fixed blade knife as well as a 10 inch Corona folding saw. Uh, sometimes at a patrol base you're digging foxholes, it's also useful to have a way to process wood so you can you know, stack wood up um, to carry a variety of different tools and spread them out across the squad is useful. And in the back I also carry a 5x7 uh, utility tarp. This is also good for lining um, a foxhole or something like that for some insulation or to keep you know, the, if it's wet or something like that off you. And that is uh, everything that I carry with me for a 72 hour Milsim West event. Hey, it's Julian with Soda Milsim. Uh, just wanted to show you my first line here. It's based on a uh, Condor belt. This is actually the first piece of gear Condor ever made in the US and it's serving pretty well. Got a simple G hook here, gloves, got a MSW tourniquet pouch for quick access, a Leatherman OHT one handed tool. Great thing about this is uh, one handed tool. Uh, simple dump pouch and uh, pocket pouch, and right now it's holding binos. However, I can throw smoke, whatever I want in there. That's nice about pocket pouches, is they're kind of universal. Uh, what I've done on the inside is adhered um, a strip of hook velcro. Moving on to my second line is based on a Ferro Concept Slickster. This is the Gen 1 Slickster. What I like about it is well, it's slick. It doesn't have anything that I don't need on it. Uh, doesn't have much crap, extra molly. Has the bare essentials, what I need uh, to play. Up front you have a rack of four LM4 mags using Patrol Instant Gear. Pouch with Kydex inserts. Um, as you can see, I run an external cummerbund, which is kind of unique. Uh, what I like about it is it provides easy donning and doffing of the system. It's just, and it's off. The nice thing about the Slickster is it also has the elastic carry cummerbund. So all of these are pouches. You can put LM4 mags, um, grenades, anything you want. Uh, I usually carry a Garmin 640 Rhino. And the other side is a Baofeng with, as you see, an antenna relocation kit. As Justin said, it's extremely important to get uh, your antenna up and away from off of your body um, to increase both your broadcasting and receiving range. Uh, my hydro is actually inside where the back plate normally goes. Um, so when you open up the back plate, it's in. You actually you see the hydro in there. Uh, this is the source. It's a WXP, um, so I like to keep my back slick because if I'm rocking or if I'm laying on the ground, there's no backpack or crap pushing up against me. Um, it allows for a lot more comfort when I'm moving. Moving on to my ruck, working outside in, you have a Tack Taylor Hydro Pouch. Uh, actually, I actually don't keep Hydro in here though. This is where I store all of my food. So you have jerk snacks. Cliff bars, protein bars, Mountain House uh, for these pro packs because what they've done is actually remove all of the air and try to get this as small as possible. Um, you know, it's about the size of my hand, and uh, these pack are really nice and they will give you enough food for what you need to run on for a 48 to 72 hour event. 
Uh, I usually carry two or three of these. I expect to maybe only have one hot meal a day. Uh, for breakfast, I'll usually carry like blueberries and cream, uh, something can be eaten cold. I expect to really only have one hot meal a day. Uh, for the event coming up, uh, Clash on Steps, it's going to be the first uh, four day event. So uh, I'm packing a little bit extra food. Decided to start carrying my camping stool again. Um, after sitting out all night, about six hours on watch in the middle of the night, sitting on cold, hard ground, you're losing a lot of heat without any insulation. This will get you up off of the ground, um, adds just a little bit of comfort, and the weight is negligible. My salt pack uh, is stored underneath the Tac Taylor Hydro pouch until I need it. You have wet wipes, you have green gas, a shell, um, some things you would find in any other salt pack. Uh, I decided to go with a uh, removal pack similar to Justin's. Uh, this is actually the Patrol Incident Gear Run Pack. If there's something that I haven't used that I still find in my kit by now, I will remove it. If I haven't used it in five events, I'm probably not going to need it or someone else is carrying it. We try and cross load between fire team members and uh, uh, between platoons as well, so we don't carry a lot of redundant gear. I picked up a Black & Decker little shovel. Now, not very milsim, but we found that uh, some of the AOs we visit, including the one in eastern Washington, have extremely tough ground. A lot of the folding shovels that we were using were shearing, uh, the steel was bending and breaking, and so um, some of the guys actually had full shovels, and uh, I jumped on that train as well. has a fiberglass handle, is as light as it's going to be, it weighs a couple pounds, but it's definitely worth it to save the backbreaking work as well as actually save your tools. Moving on to the top of the pack. Has real world IFAC, uh, has quick clot, boo kit as well, some comfort items, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, bug spray, it's got Tums, ibuprofen, anti diarrheals, red chem light in case uh, we need a signal in the dark for an emergency. Uh, basically, anything you would really need to take care of or at least stabilize someone in the event of an emergency until uh, you can get a real world medic on site. I also carry a someone Justin Gold Zero Nomad 7. Um, our solar panels will actually chain together and create uh, a larger solar panel to be able to charge things faster. Um, I carry spare cell phone battery, spare set of uh, rechargeable double days, various cords, um, so this will keep going for 48 to 72 hours. And we into the pontoon. Uh, I found that a lot of the time when I get to the PB and I needed something in my bag, I would open it and there'd just be an explosion of gear all around it, various things laying about. And uh, what I wanted to do is compartmentalize things. So if I needed one thing inside of a pouch, I would have very lightweight pouches inside that that I could pull out and specifically look for the one item I need. So instead of having something like screwed about, I could simply open up, take what I needed, and put this back in the bag. Um, saves space, saves hassle when you're trying to pack up, and it just generally helps you organize your patrol base better. Uh, in this case, this bag has some orange paracord, ass wipes, wet wipes, and a headlight with both white and red light. Next bag has cold weather gear, watch cap. Glove liners, um, these are incredible. If you ever stay up on, on patrol or you have night watch on the LPOP or something like that, um, a lot of the gloves aren't insulated. So slipping these underneath the main gloves um, can really save this. And finally, basic ski mask, keep you warm, uh, shield your face from the sun, whatever else you need. Spare pair of socks, um, I recommend a clean dry pair of socks for every day that you're at the event um, and always go to sleep in a clean pair of socks. You'll... Condor fleece, um, this can be layered. Uh, what I wanted to do with my cold weather gear is actually create a layering up or layering down system depending on the AO. Um, there are events such as Victorville where you would never probably even take something like this. Uh, we've been to events in Leavenworth where you absolutely would need this and more because you will wake up in the morning and it's 20 degrees. Um, Ranger roll, another spare pair of socks, underwear, and a shirt. Next pontoon. 
have usually Gen 3 nods in here. Um, nice stable case, light, but protects nods. Equix shell with integrated Nomex. Um, nice thing is I sized up on this, and what this allows me to do is if it starts raining, I can keep this in my assault pack that you saw earlier, pull this out, throw it over all of my gear without having to take off any gear, and it'll keep me dry. Um, nice thing about this is it has double zipper seal be able to actually zip this up and still have access to your mags from the bottom half down. I'm sure you'll see this is familiar. Uh, pretty popular model. This is a GSI Outdoors little titanium stove. Again, I can fit a can of um, fuel, the stove, spork, a little uh, salt and pepper in there, um, and it comes with an integrated uh, koozie as well, so you can actually drink straight out of this if you needed to. Moving on to the top of the pouch, I always carry at least one unopened bottle of water um, just in case I drink all my water on the ruck or uh, I need something to cook with. This allows me not to have to drain my bladder uh, from my plate carrier or my salt pack uh, to cook with. I found that uh, two cans of green gas will always last me through an event. I don't believe I've ever even used one full can of green gas, but uh, I like to go with the notion that uh, two is one and one is none. So. Spare bladder, um, it's so light and rolls up for a pretty nice size. It's one of those things that I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, a puncture bladder I've seen before can take someone completely out of the game or force them to carry a water bottle and a pouch and it's not man. This allows me also to store extra water around camp, uh, around the patrol base, so I can fill up two full bladders of water and have a uh, bladder always ready to go if I need to. Now, what I've done with my sleep system, it's evolved a lot over the years. Um, this is a Sea to Summit um, stuff sack, waterproof with the event technology on the bottom. And this was actually waterproof yet allows air out, so it will stuff down to as small as you can possibly make it. And what I used to do, as I'm sure you've seen in uh, last year's video, is I carried all three pieces of my sleep system stuff right that is the sleeping bag, the bivy, and my air mattress. Well, I rolled it into one, and now when I get it in my patrol base, my sleep system is ready to go. All I need to do is blow up the internal air mattress, and I keep my pillow as well as my bellows bag for blowing up my air mattress inside. The uh, neat thing about the sleeping bag is that there's actually no insulation on the bottom because when you're laying on the ground, your body will actually compress the insulation anyways and you pretty much get no insulation value out of that. What this does is actually replace that with a pocket that you insert a sleeping pad in and get you up off the ground for comfort and it saves uh, about 30% weight on the sleeping bag as well. In the internal pockets here, I have spare chem lights in every color, spare LM4 mag, this is good if I lose a mag or if I break one. I always have one to replace just in case. Spare bolt and charging handle for my LM4. Little roll of duct tape, as well as a patch kit for my air mattress. Spare batteries for my nods, as well as uh, my radio. This bag does have an integrated. shell to cover the pack. What I've done is actually stuffed the poncho in here as well. Um, I always recommend carrying a poncho at bare minimum MSW you need uh, wet weather gear. This can serve as uh, wet weather gear. This can serve as a hasty shelter. Um, it can serve as camouflage for or concealment. Um, just all around basic purpose. Great thing to have.